Phil Snow is now retired, and that's too bad because he's a great football coach. Still has his uh, home here in the Waco area, former Baylor defensive coordinator, NFL coordinator, and then also was, well, at Arizona State University when they had their heck of a run back in the mid to late 90s. He joins us from Idaho with Craig Smoke, Paul Catalina, and David Smoke. Coach, great to hear from you. Great to have you on the show and your knowledge. So when you heard Arizona State would eventually be added to the Big 12 from the time you were there, and they seemed like they tried to fight this as much as they can. Your thoughts about the Sun Devils to the Big 12? Well, uh, hello to everybody there. Good to hear your voices. Um, you know, I, I just, I'm an old-fashioned guy, and, I and you know, I spent 18 years in the um, Pac-10. Now it's the Pac-12. I guess it's the Pac-4 now. But, um, um, you know, I just hate to see that conference broke up the way it's broke up. So, um, you know, if it, uh, but you know what? Um, I don't, I'm not sure people really care about history anymore, younger people. And so you just got to adjust to the times. And we're going to have these super conferences now, I guess. And uh, I'm sure Arizona State's looking forward to uh, playing in the, uh, in the, in the uh, Big 12. From a coach and a logistical standpoint, for football, it's not really – as big of a deal for every other sport, it's going to be it's going to be hard because you play more than one game a week. Uh, but how do you think the the student athletes will react to this? Do you think that they'll that they'll enjoy it at least for football? I don't know about everybody else. You know, still in football, you know, um, when you have to travel three or four or five hours on an airplane and you have to travel through two time zones, you know, that's a tough deal in college football. You know. Uh, before in the old days, we used to say for every time zone, you add a time zone, you got to leave a day early. So, you know, it's just going to be, a, it's going to be rough on the athletes. They, they may like it initially, but as the thing goes, you know, you, you play six, you know, uh, six league games away or, or five and you're traveling three or four hours and you're getting home late on Sunday. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a burden on the athletes. Um, uh, and so um, it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds. It's like Washington is going to uh, the Big Ten. And can you imagine going from Washington to State College? I mean, that, that's a, a heck of a trip. So um, I think that's going to really affect the athletes um, uh, year after year. And, and I'm not sure they're going to enjoy that part of it. Coach, uh, just from your experiences uh – you know, in the Pac-12, now Pac-4, and, and whatever it's going to end up being here over the next few weeks, is there, you know, just some prevailing memories, a couple things just about being in that conference specifically or playing some of those teams, being a part of, of a program there that stands out to you that, that will be a memory that you carry regardless of whether the Pac sticks around or not? Well, you know, the, the rivalry games, um, you know, I coached, okay, so I coached at Cal Berkeley and we played Stanford in the big game. Um, and you know, that, that was a treat that, you know, everybody drank wine and ate cheese and didn't really care who won in that one. <laughs> you know, th then I went to Arizona state and you got Arizona state playing Arizona and they want to kill each other. Uh, that was a heated rivalry. Um, and then I went to, uh, the, uh, UCLA and we played SC, you know, that was a big rivalry. And then I went to Washington and we played the Apple cup. So, you know, all those, those, those games are gone now. Um, which is a shame, you know, that, that's history. And, you know, I think the pack was uh, 108 years old and, and, and now no longer exists probably. So, you know, that, that for older people, I think that's a big deal. I think for the younger generation, they really don't care. So, uh, but, um, you know, I have fond memories of those big games, um, uh, some just unbelievable wins and some unbelievable losses. So, uh, um, it was a great time in my life. I spent 18 years in the league, so it was fun. Of all the teams where you coach, Cal, Washington, UCLA, Arizona State, Cal's the one still right now trying to figure out their future. Uh, and, and you yep. mentioned that that game with Stanford, and so are they. Which of the schools, Arizona State, Washington, or UCLA, do you feel like at the next, like next year – might be in best position to succeed? Because Washington, we know, is really good. UCLA, Kelly's done a really good job, and Arizona State's trying to build something with the young coach in Dillingham. Yeah, see, see I really think that, that, that Washington is one of the best jobs in that conference. Um, and, you know, it's proven that the amount, you know, 
you look at the pro football players they've had over the last, you know, uh, 10, 12 years is unreal. So, you know, I think they're going to do well wherever they go. Um, you know, obviously, I think SC, they, you know, SC is, is, is the name out west. All the kids want to go to USC if they don't go to the SEC or the Big 12 or wherever they go. So, um, but, you know, I think Arizona State will struggle just like they struggled in the pack. You know, if you look at Arizona State's history, they haven't won very much. Uh, look at all their, the records of the head coaches there, and there hasn't been a lot of wins. U of A is the same thing. So, I, you know, I think those two schools are, you know, will struggle in, no matter what conference they're in. So, uh, you know, that's kind of how I see it. Phil, Arizona State in particular to me, and uh, we were, uh, Garrett and I actually, when we were at the Super Bowl, we went on campus and saw a, a show there. Uh, and it's it's an unbelievable campus. It's in a great area. It seems to me like they have not, especially since, and we had Jake Plummer on the show on Friday, and he said to tell you hello. Yep. Uh, but uh, since that era when you were there, they've done less with more than maybe a lot of schools in the Pac-12 would, would have. Yeah, I would agree with that. You know you know, it's a fantastic place for people our age, your age, to go and visit. And you say, God, how do they not win here? But, you know, a lot of the kids don't like the heat. You know, they're not getting the caliber of player that you think they're getting, and they're not keeping all the in-state kids. But the in-state, there was probably about 12 really good players when I was at Arizona State. Now there's 24 to 30, and they're not getting their share of them. Um, and so, you know, it, it looks really good from the outside. But if you look at the history of Arizona State, they haven't won a lot. Frank Cush won, you know, certain years, but they haven't won a lot there. So it, it's a harder job than I think people realize. Coach, you also know the state of Texas pretty well. And I've already seen, you know, some of the coaches from these, these Pac-12 schools starting like, hey, Texas and Texas, you know, like they, they're already starting to, to turn their focus. But knowing how you guys came in and, and just knowing from your experience over the years, what kind of a challenge is there for schools like Arizona, Utah, et cetera? Uh, although Utah's had some, some pretty good success in Texas, but what kind of a, a barrier is there, if any, when it comes to, hey, we're now in the Big 12, that means we can get into Texas? Well, I, I tell you what, you've got to have the right coach. Um, because, you know, when Matt took, wanted to take the job at uh, Baylor, he, he called me and he said, Phil, I don't know anybody in Texas. I said, Matt, if, if you treat those people the way they should be treated um, and, and you get involved with them, I mean, you're going to be accepted in Texas. And so, you know, Matt came in there and look what the success he's having at Nebraska recruiting Texas. And really, he only re was at Baylor three years. So I think if you go in and you do it right, and I think Utah has done it right in Texas. They've gotten some really good players out of Texas. Um, I think you can have success recruiting in Texas. Um, you know, the Texas high school coaches, if you take care of their players, they'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. So it, it, and you've got to spend the time with them and, 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 and be at all the functions that are important to the, the high school coaches in Texas. And if you do those things, you can recruit Texas, and, and, and they will accept you. Now, it may take a, a, a year or two or three to, to, to get – you know, entrenched, but you can get that done. So I, I think it just depends on who the head football coach is. Baylor plays Utah, Phil, in the second game of the year. And yeah. right before Brigham Young, of course, was accepted to the Big 12, that was on their schedule, which was out of nowhere, really. Oregon plays yeah. Texas Tech. It was interesting, but to me, Utah reminds me a lot of the 2021 or the 2019 teams at Baylor. They're offensively maybe a little bit better, but they do come at you hard. Is that kind of like the same what you see from them when you watch them play? Yeah, you know, I don't know Kyle real well, the head coach William, but I knew his dad. You know, his dad played for the Raiders and was a big, tough son of a gun. And, and Kyle has that mindset. I don't know if you guys have followed Kyle at all, but he's a great athlete. Um, he plays, he does some downhill racing. He does all kinds of different sports. And he's a hell of an athlete and a competitor. And you watch his football teams, and that's what they are. I mean, they are tough. They're physical. They compete. Um, he develops players. Um, he just does a fantastic job. I think no matter what conference that they go to, they will adjust and, and win football games because of him. Colorado's coming back to the Big 12, and they have the most famous person you could possibly imagine being a head coach there. 
Uh, this is a little bit unprecedented when it comes to college football, someone like Deion Sanders being in charge of a program. From the outside looking in on that, how curious are you to see how that goes at a place like Colorado? You know, you know, from the outside, I'm looking in. I like Deion. I, mm. I, I read all his articles and his approach. And, you know, Deion, everybody thinks he's flashy and all this stuff, but he's a tough, hard-nosed guy. I mean, he, he gets those guys to play hard. They're accountable. They got to go to class. They got to act right on campus. Um, I just like his approach. Now, getting rid of all the players at Colorado, you know, I'm not sure how that all unfolds. But he's doing it within the rules, so um, you know it goes. But I think as a football coach, I like what he's doing, and I'm anxious to see his team play this year. Phil, do you miss coaching? I mean, practices have begun. I know we saw you uh, what back in the spring when you were. Uh, when Coach Rule came into town, it was great to see you. Paul was there, too. Yep. Do you, uh, you kind of get the itch at all once uh, the practice is, the whistle starts blowing? Well, here's the deal. Uh, okay, I'm going to sit out this year, but I'm starting to get the itch again. So uh -oh. I'm going to look into some things and maybe work two more years after this season. Hmm. So I, um, I might do that. So, But, I, you know, I don't need to, but um, I'm starting to get the itch again. So I'll see how this season goes, and I may get back involved. How much would the transfer portal and now what we have with NIL, how much would that have affected you recruiting a player? Would you have been able to kind of just kind of morph into that and understand it and move on? I think so. You know, you know, you take a guy like Saban. He's an old school guy that has just keeps adjusting to the times. Um, and that's what you have to do now. It's like, you know, I don't like what's happening in the, in the Pac-12. But you know what? It's, it's, it's our day and age right now. Things are changing, and if you don't adapt, you're going to be lost. So, you know, I think all the older coaches, if you watch them, they're starting to adapt and, and finding a way to survive and function and thrive in, in, in the environment, and uh, you have to do that. Was Dr. Crow at Arizona State when you were there? I think, I think he was, wasn't he, or is it right about that timeline? Yeah, he was not there when I was there. Okay, okay, all right. Yep. Phil, thank you, man. Enjoy Idaho. Is there like a view of about 10,000 miles when you get up on some of those mountain ranges? Oh, it's unbelievable. And the weather's 75 degrees here. Oh, thank, you for <laughs> thank you for throwing that at our face. It's 105 here, as you know. Yeah. I, I know. Yeah. But you know what I do like? I do like the golf courses when it's 105. Nobody's going to play in the afternoon so I can get out and go. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> so. <laughs> they can play in two and a half hours. Thank exactly you, man. Exactly right. Yeah. It was great to see you earlier this year and hope to see you again yeah. soon. And it, it, we'd like to kind of maybe pick your brain on occasion during the season. Man, I'd love to talk to you guys. Call me anytime. All right, Phil Snow, former Baylor, Arizona State, UCLA, Cal, uh, Washington, and NFL, many the Temple, Carolina Panthers most recently, uh, football coach with us on 365 Sports. And he's got a million.